Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Sam from Fig and Blue here. Welcome, if this is your first time stopping by, hello, I would love for you to stay. Today, I have a very exciting video. I think you guys are really gonna love it. Um, and it is five different ways to fold your charcuterie. You guys asked previously on my last video for some holiday themed boards. Well, this is gonna help elevate those boards for you guys. So I thought instead of doing a really long lengthy video on how to build a holiday board, we would start with some of the basics first. By artfully folding your charcuterie, your guests are just going to be blown away it's gonna add a lot of different definition to your boards and it's gonna add a lot of interest. There will be no slapping of meat on a board. There will be no more manhandling after this video. You guys are gonna to wanna to make salami roses and salami chains and prosciutto ribbons after this. I guarantee it. All right, if you want to learn how to elevate your charcuterie board, then let's get started. All right, and for the sake of this video, I just went and picked up this pack from Bassetto. This is a four pack. We have a prosciutto, a dry kappa, a hard salami, and then a peppered hard salami. So I thought this would be a good variety to show you guys different ways on how to fold your charcuterie. Um, and then we also have this peppered salami, and I'm going to show you guys how to cut and style this as well. All right, of course, after washing your hands, we're gonna start with the prosciutto. So the my favorite thing to do with prosciutto on my boards is make prosciutto ribbons. Um, I do wanna mention one thing before we get too far into this. Um, I definitely recommend shopping around for a good prosciutto. Um, I did a taste test on my Instagram of three different prosciuttos a while ago, if you guys wanna check that out. Um, this one from this particular brand was very salty, so I, I get it. Sure, or, uh, prosciutto is a cured, like a salt cured meat, so it's going to be salty in general, but this one, after the three that I tasted, this was definitely the saltiest, so I just wanted to, um, make you guys aware of that. So what I like to do is I always stick it down like that, peel off the, whatever this is, protective layer, and then I kind of determine what side I want facing up. So there's usually a fat side, and then there is just the meat side. Um, this one doesn't have a lot of fat, but it normally would be on this side. Very nice and even, and so we're gonna just do this side for this sake. So what I like to do is I fold it less than half, so maybe like three quarter of the way up, and then I press the bottom here. And then all I do is I pinch the bottoms, like so. And then fold and then it'll look like that, and then I pinch the very bottom like that, and then it kind of fans it out. So let me show you how it'll look on both sides. This one's a little bit harder. It's a thicker prosciutto, so it doesn't get that nice fold, and then sometimes you get the, the break in there like so, but if you find a good prosciutto, it shouldn't give you any problems. All right, let's do it one more time. So we take, this one is really thick. So we take it and then I peel. Then we're gonna fold this all the way up. I leave about a quarter inch. Kind of tuck that in. And then pinch it at the bottom, fold, pinch, and then pinch it again. And then you kind of got to play with it if you want it to stick, but there you go. All right, the next one we're going to talk about is the dry kappa or capicola or hot kappa. Sometimes it's um, they have spicy ones. Um, this is really yummy. I like the meat to fat ratio. It makes it really creamy when you eat it. Um, 
This is a way I would not suggest displaying it on your board. Um, we all have per personal preferences and this is one of mine. I don't um, particularly like when meat is just taken from the package like this and then set on the charcuterie board. I will say um, there's no rules when you're making a charcuterie board, so remember that. And um, it's your art, so do whatever you wanna do with it. But this way, the only way I would um, I would style this if I didn't want to break it apart is maybe if you put like things around the edges so it's mostly covered and all you see is this part, then I would say it's acceptable or I might do that on a charcuterie board, but um, anyway. All right, so what I'm gonna show you here is a fun way to style this. So Kappa, is a very thin meat. It's kind of hard to separate. Um, you have to be a little bit gentle with it and work with it. Um, sometimes the fat will get stuck together and you just kind of gotta see it'll rip because it's so thin. Just kind of maneuver around and be light with it. All right, so whenever I'm putting these on a board, what I do is I always fold it in half and then from the center, I fold it almost, yeah, about in half, and then fold it over again, and fold it over again. So, all right, so that's what it looks like once you've folded it three times. I always recommend when you're using salami or um, this type of meat to always have it at room temperature because it'll hold its shape a little bit better. So there's another one. So all I'm going to do real quick is fold them, so half, tuck and roll. So fold it in half and then roll it. So they almost look like little roses. All right. Okay, so then when I'm displaying it on a board, I usually put it next to some brie or something, um, whatever space I can fit it in, and then I just kind of build it like so. So it looks like a little bouquet. And then people can just easily grab each slice. All right, the next one is hard salami and we are making a salami chain. So what you do is you grab your salami, poli <laughs> salami piece, your salami piece, fold it in half, and then fold it in half again. So it looks like so. And then we're gonna take another one and do the exact same thing and then we're gonna take and link them like that. Okay, and then when we take our third one, we're going to link it like that. So, okay. Like so. There's a lot of different ways that people will do this. Um, sometimes they don't even link them and they'll just set them next to each other like that, but this is just how I do it for my business. And I think it looks nice and it flows really well. Um, I've learned to do this one hand because, again, if you're not using room temperature salami, it just falls apart. But, um, so I'll fold with one hand and hold with the other. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I definitely recommend trying to keep at least the tops the same. You'll find a way that flows for you, but there is the salami link. All right, for this next one, we're gonna be making a salami rose. You'll need a little portion cup like this. Um, and honestly, it's not a big deal if you don't have something like this. You can totally make these without using a portion cup. Um, I just use the portion cups mostly when I am prepping. If I have a lot to make, um, it makes it a little bit easier. Otherwise, you can totally make this without it and then just set it on the board and it will stay as long as you have things around it. Um, okay, so I have 12 pieces of peppered salami here and then my portion cup. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I do about eight. This salami is so messy. This is just a really simple, quick way to do it. So we have six, seven, and eight. All right. 
And then what we're gonna do is we're going to fold them in half. Okay. And then from this end, hopefully you can see, we're going to tuck and roll. Again, this is a really quick way. There's so many ways to make it. Okay, and then you kind of fluff it up. You will lose some of the peppered salami. So the last four, what I like to do is the last part, I just overlap it. And this, just to give it some texture, when I fold it, I like to leave a little bit of space um, so they're not evenly matched up because it just helps make it look a little bit more um, realistic, like a rose. All right. And then you have your salami rose. You can stick it in here and then just kind of fluff it up as you need. Again, this is just a small rose. And then that's what it looks like. Okay, so this last one I'm going to show you is the log salami. I just call it a log salami. Um, and this is a peppered one. And this one is kind of annoying and I apologize. It was the only salami I could find at the store. This is always just a something I recommend. I think that looks nice. Um, and as opposed to just doing a straight line, which you could do as well, but curving it just gives it that extra little bit. Um, and then also pay attention to your spacing. Oh, here's one that totally fell off, but yeah, you guys get the idea. Okay, now that you guys have learned the five basic ways to fold your charcuterie, let's take this a step farther. In the comment section down below, tell me what you want to see next. And we'll kind of zone in on what we want to learn so that we can build the perfect charcuterie board. Or perfect for you. It doesn't have to be perfect for everyone because there are no rules when building a charcuterie board. Other than safety, like sanitary, make sure your hands are clean. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will talk to you very soon. Bye!